Safety first, we are installing new brake lights and reverse signal and blinkers on our back bumper because we're gonna have a motorcycle up here. It's gonna block our factory brake lights, reverse lights and blinker. So that's bad because we're going down the street and we hit the brakes, nobody's gonna see it. So we wanted to put this on the end of the bumper, really bright new lights. What we're gonna do is connect these new brake lights to our existing ones. That way they operate on the same circuit and everything should be dandy. I've already installed one of these. I have gone through the trouble of figuring out what everything is so that you can see it a little bit more efficiently this go around. All right, before we go any further, we just wanna remind you to make sure that you disconnect your battery before you start doing any wiring. Just wanna make sure you stay safe through the process. First things first, we gotta drill some holes where we can put this on the bumper. So if you're doing this at home, when you're wiring, you need a couple things. We got wire cutters, this will help us cut the wires. Strippers, super recommend the kind that pulls them off for you. Um, sometimes the cheap ones you buy, you have to like pull the, the, pull the like coating off the wire. These ones cut and pull, highly recommend. Next thing, when you're connecting two wires on a vehicle, super important to use waterproof heat shrinking. So this will join two wires together. Then you heat shrink it, it's waterproof, creates a good seal, really important. Third, any wiring you're using, make sure you're using either automotive or marine wiring. Um, it's stranded, it's coated, it's waterproof, it's a lot better, and you should not use solid copper wire on a moving vehicle. So that's important. Other than that, you'll need probably electrical tape and that's pretty much it. The only other thing you can look into is ways to connect multiple wires together. So we are gonna be cutting an existing wire and then connecting two wires to one wire. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. You can use the cap that twists. You can use um, special waterproof marine things. Some people just twist the wires together and solder it. Don't recommend you do that. So look into the proper way to do that. Just make sure you're figuring out the right way to do this kind of stuff. Wiring is important using is important. With that being said, we are gonna be using these caps. They are called standard wire connectors um, to connect three together. This is not probably the right thing to do because these are not waterproof. However, it's gonna be behind our wall. We're gonna reseal that. And we used them a couple times in the van and it worked fine. So we're gonna use this, but check with whoever knows better than me what you're supposed to do. On our bus, there's four lights on the back here. We have the blinker, the brake light, the reverse light, and the running lights. Um, these have eight screws on them, but four hold it actually to the bus, and the other four just hold the cap onto the back plate. So if you don't need to get under there, you can just take it off the bus. So we're gonna take off the four. It's the top, bottom, and the two sides, and it should come right off. The other thing is that this, it's been on here for 20 years. There's some kind of sticky thing underneath it to keep it waterproof. Um, it's really hard to get off. We're gonna reseal them all anyways, so I'm gonna pry it off and then we're gonna re-silicone it. These actually just quick disconnect, so you can just do that if you want. So we have disconnected all our lights. You can see they're all color coded, so that helps you color code your wires. This green one is for our blinker on the right. This red one is for our brakes, that makes sense. This blue one is the reverse light. And then there's actually a brown wire here that's just connected. And this is your running light. So whenever you turn your headlights on, this will get power and basically just keep the lights glowing so that cars can see you on the back. So keep that in mind. You don't really need to use this one. It's kind of separate, it's hard to get to. So you can get to them all from right here. I'm gonna use white for reverse. We're gonna start there. I'm gonna use these little wire cutters. These are super great. Stripped, bang, bang. 
this is where we get fun. So this is the blue wire that connects here. You can see it together. Okay, so I basically just pre-twist the wires a little bit and then you take this cap, really easy to use, what they use in houses, and you just twist it. And then you can see they get really tight. And that's that. Bam. I like to super tape it and that helps it stay together. One down. One thing I really wish I knew is where is my running lights. That is this brown wire that nothing is connected to. It's kind of under the same thing, but this is actually the power source to your running lights. So that's what it is on our bus. You should probably check it yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to connect two wires together. We have one left, I did these ones already, but I'm gonna show you with this. This is the ground, it's black. Um, I'm gonna use this wire here. So first I just strip it a little bit, maybe like a quarter of an inch, not a whole lot. Then you get one of these. Okay, so you basically take this little connector and your wire, you stick it in one end, and then you crimp the first end we just go right here and crimp it. And then once that's crimped, um, you're gonna put the second end in and crimp the other side. Okay, and now they're connected. Last thing we gotta do is just heat it up so it shrinks up. This is the last step for us. We need to connect the ground. Um, this is a vehicle, so the ground is the chassis. So we basically can just take this and connect it somewhere to the bus, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna connect it right here. So this is stripped. This is a ring terminal. I'm not sure you can see it. It works the same way as the other ones. You just stick this in here and crimp it on and then heat shrink it. So we're gonna stick this in here. You're gonna crimp it on. Our school bus had a lot of screws, self-tapping screws that we removed. And we are just gonna screw it right to the bottom of the frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire brush a tiny little section to get all the dirt and crud off. Now I have bare metal. I'm just gonna stick this through here and I am going to screw it in. Okay. And that's it. We're now grounded. All our wires are connected. Let's go test it out. a hardy coat of sealant silicon around our lights and then putting it back on so that no water gets in there. So we don't have any footage of it, but it is important to zip tie your wires together and make sure that they are properly secured to the vehicle. 
you want to try and make sure that they can't move around too much while you're driving so we did secure them after we finished filming this you may have noticed on our bus we actually left the wires on the outside of the bus going towards the brake lights that's because we are not taking off all the interior metal panels of the bus but if you wanted to conceal it and you were doing that you probably could just get to these wires from the inside after you've removed some wall panels. One important thing to note is that for each of the lights on the back, there are actually two wires that come to the quick connect joint. Those two wires are actually the same circuit and they are both the hot wire. They are both live wires. So think of that as just the one positive loop and not the negative. The reason that there's no negative wire is that the negative is just the ground of the bus. It's just any part of the bus that's screwed in. The lights on the back of the vehicle actually have a little plate that ground via a screw that holds it to the bus. The hardest part about this was just figuring out which wire corresponds to which light, where I need to connect them in my new lights, and how I was going to route the wires so that they were secure. And really all you're doing here is connecting a wire from your new LED brake light to your existing one so that they operate on the same circuit. If you're curious about how we actually built this back deck, you can check out our previous video linked up here. For more build videos, please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up if you like it, drop any questions in the comment section below. We'll see you next time.